That's why in classical physics, it could never happen that what you do in the future can go back and affect the present. Okay? You can... Here, let, let, let me put the question this way. Okay. Yeah. My name is Raskolnikov. There is an old woman who gives me a lot of trouble. I owe her money. And I think, how about taking an axe and murdering that old woman? Nobody would know. So I'm still, just as you said, I'm still pondering whether should I, I should kill the old woman or not. And you are now Dostoevsky. And you say, I found in the ABL rule, I found that the particle, you have to tie the two things together, Yakir. You said, many years ago, I found that the particle between two measurements is affected by both the past and the future. Now you, Raskolnikov, there is something in your future. Einstein said that the event, whether you murdered the old woman or you did not murder her, is already, is just there like the present, which I feel, you know, it's a straight jacket. Uh, Raskolnikov, does he has a choice? Does he, does he have free will when he thinks about the moral question or not? And now you say that by quantum mechanics, by your work in quantum mechanics, by the fact that you cannot apply the laws of statistics on a brain, on any human brain, you can tell Raskolnikov that he has some freedom of choice because he's, he's running the scenarios of what he is going to do later, whether he will be caught by the police or not. This is the whole story. Uh, what, can, what, is so, what is unique uh, about your approach when you apply it to such a, such a case? So I'm saying the following. <clears throat> In classical physics, we saw that the time is very simple. There was a past that is not there anymore. There is a present where I have to make a decision, and there is a future that's going to be affected by my decision if I had some freedom, right? Mm -hmm. 